And now on BBC World News, we trace Simon Reeve's 2007 journey along the Tropic of Capricorn, following the line which took him to some of the most beautiful but troubled regions of the world. Here's his story. Imagine a line more than 22,000 miles long that cuts through some of the most remote areas of the Southern Hemisphere. And look what's up ahead of us! Look at this! Look at this sight! The Tropic of Capricorn marks the southern edge of the Earth's tropical zone. It runs through Southern Africa, Australia and South America. This is just nature showing off. Following the line will take me to beautiful but troubled regions of the world. Oh, bloody hell. Capricorn passes through areas of desperate poverty, political conflict and environmental devastation. Just ripping it down, look at this. The first leg of my journey takes me through Namibia and Botswana and on a gruelling journey across the Kalahari Desert. Just over there is where the Tropic of Capricorn hits Africa. This is the start of my journey around the world, following the line that marks the southern border of the tropics. Just north of the Tropic of Capricorn, on the edge of the desert, is Namibia's second city, Swakopmund. Arriving here is a journey into Namibia's colonial past. For three decades up until the First World War, Namibia was called German Southwest Africa, and Swakopman still feels like Bavaria in the sunshine. I'm just in an antique shop, just near the supermarket, which has a pretty varied selection of German memorabilia. And some of it's even Namibian. The Germans ruled the country for just over 30 years, and more than 60,000 Germans visit Namibia each year. This tourist shop had a curious line in souvenirs. Unbelievable. What a strange place. A little bit weird, frankly. It's a strange mix of memorabilia in this shop. They've got stuff from the the Second Reich, the Third Reich even, copies of Mein Kampf and little photos of a smiling Hitler and then they've got flags of Namibia. And sort of in celebration of the modern country, it just seems a weird conflict or contrast between the old Germany and the new Namibia. Swakopmund is built on a dark secret now largely forgotten. In 1904, German troops crushed a rebellion by the indigenous Herero and Nama people. The German commander issued an extermination order, leading to the deaths of tens of thousands of men, women and children. The Herero people couldn't live in their own, in country. Their own country. They should be wiped out. They should be shot at sight. So he, he I met up with Herero historian Johanna Kajiapara, who explained that much of Swakopmund was built by Herero slaves. Nearly half of them died in concentration camps. This area here next to the sea is where my ancestors were kept. It is a genocide because the order was to exterminate the over Herero people. How many? How many Herero were killed during this period? How many people actually died? Between 65,000 and 80,000 80, people. Anything up to 80% of the Herero people were, were wiped out. Mm -hmm. And for those that were remaining, they lost all their land. Yeah. The few hundred Germans that died during the rebellion are honored in Swakopman Cemetery. But there are many more bodies here. We're leaving what seems to be the, the sort of white German bit of the cemetery. But look, the path, the path stops. 
everywhere where I'm walking right now. I'm walking over the bones, the remains of my ancestors. Therefore, I need to go down, take a little bit of the soil. That's what we do. It's hard to take in the scale of what happened here. Namibians who were killed, worked or starved to death lie in unmarked graves. And there are bushes growing on the humps. These are, this is greenery growing on, on, yes, on, on shallow grave, graves, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Starting from there, that's a grave, a grave, a grave, a grave. In the same line, another grave. Neither the South Africans, who took control after the Germans, nor Namibia's post-independence rulers have wanted to dwell on the past. So here we are, this is obviously quite a new memorial in memory of the thousands who perished under mysterious circumstances. Doesn't really seem to be much mystery to me about the circumstances. People were worked to death or killed. It is as if the Germans have practiced on us before they did that to the Jewish people. The Herero massacre was the first genocide of the 20th century. It was finally acknowledged by the German government in 2004. East of Swakopmund, the Tropic of Capricorn cuts through the Namib Desert and passes through bushland south of the Namibian capital, Windhoek. Although it looks wild, much of this land is grazed by cattle on vast farms and wildlife in the area is under threat. Farmers here often shoot cheetahs who prey on their livestock. French conservationist Olivier Houlet is trying to protect the big cats. Locals call him Catman. We have a wonderful project with five cheetahs, male, which were all orphans. From the, Their mum has been shot by, by hunters when they were very small. And the concept, the project, was to raise them all together. The five rescued cheetahs now live wild on a protected area of Olivier's land. When will you be releasing them? So we hope beginning of next year. But the very, very important job before that is to survey the place by plane and to make calculation of how many prey is, what kind of environment, is it how many cheetahs are already there. Right, All this balance is right. The cheetahs are being reintegrated into the wild and can kill for themselves. But for the moment, Olivier supplements their diet. So while I was busy taking photographs, Oliver was whipping out a huge slab of meat. The very first step to be as close as possible from nature would be to give them exactly what they would have if they would be free. So we only, when we feed them, we only give them game meat. We will have to be a little patient. I'm going to spread some meat around. But if they hunt something, if they put down a kudu today or any kind of animal, then we might have to walk and look for them in that yeah. case. What, so if they've, if they've already eaten, they won't want to eat a bit of meat? The idea was to leave the meat for the cheetahs and then retreat to a safe distance. Here they come. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's not supposed to be like that. Come, come, come. Quick. What the f? They're all here. They're all here. Okay, so maybe a little bit quickly. We were surrounded by hungry cheetahs. They're, they're being quite serious. They are wild guys, they are able to hunt and kill for themselves. And it's all about now body language and no fear at all. God, there's all five of them. Look at them, I mean, these are really good cool creatures. This one there is actually the smallest cheetah, but he's the boss. He's the leader of the group. And this one is the biggest one of the group. He's the power of the group with his brother. He is the one who put down the prey. It was fantastic to see Olivier's rapport with these big cats as he faced down the cheetahs. Everything's fine now. Ninety-five percent of Namibia's cheetahs live on land owned by commercial farms. 
Olivier wants the Namibian government to protect these big cats in order to boost tourism. If people come all over the world to see that beautiful country, to see wildlife, to see something unique in the world where there are so few people and so many animals, so I believe that would be a very interesting thing to protect them and, and be able to see them, see them in a free environment. The very important thing is to convince government to help us to do that. Wildlife tourism has been one of the engines of economic growth in Namibia since independence. But the country's apparent success masks a society with huge inequalities. As we zigzagged along Capricorn, I wanted to find out more. So we headed for the big city, driving 70 miles north of the line to the Namibian capital, Windhoek. The line will take me to beautiful but troubled regions of the world. Oh, bloody hell! Capricorn passes through areas of desperate poverty political conflict and environmental devastation. Just ripping it down, look at this. The first leg of my journey takes me through Namibia and Botswana and on a group that marks the southern border of the tropics. Just north of the Tropic of Capricorn, on the edge of the desert, is Namibia's second city, Swakopmund. Arriving here is a journey into Namibia's colonial past. For three decades up until the First World War, Namibia was called German Southwest Cooling Journey across the Kalahari Desert. Just over there is where the Tropic of Capricorn hits Africa. This is the start of my journey around the world, following the line of areas of the Southern Hemisphere. And look what's up ahead of us! Look at this! Look at this place! The Tropic of Capricorn marks the southern edge of the Earth's tropical zone. It runs through southern Africa, Australia and South America. This is just nature showing off. Following the... And now on BBC World News, we trace Simon Reeves' 2007 journey along the Tropic of Capricorn, following the line which took him to some of the most beautiful but troubled regions of the world. Here's his story. Imagine a line more than 22,000 miles long that cuts through some of the most remote...